fastened in the window's pin. Keep your hand on that plow. Hold on. Noah said you done lost your track. Can't plow straight and keep a looking back. Keep your hand on that plow and hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on that plow and hold on Hold on Hold on Hold on Keep your hand on that plow and hold on Liberty, freedom, and justice for all. A concept that all but evaded millions of African American slaves and free men in the United States of America. With the Emancipation Proclamation, slaves were now free by law with the executive order by President Lincoln. Then came the problem. There were four million ex-slaves who neither had jobs, houses, literacy, or a place to go. In the South, they didn't have free labor anymore. Slaves were relaxing and no one was in the fields picking cotton. But black legislators were being voted into office. Things were looking pretty good for a black man in the South. Yet then the 13th Amendment came into effect. You see, the 13th Amendment passed January 31st, 1865, and was later ratified by the states December 6, 1865. The 13th Amendment states that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except by punishment of a crime, whereof a party shall be duly convicted, shall exist within the United States of America or any place under its jurisdiction. What? In layman terms, commit a crime, it's slavery time. At this time, the prison census flipped from 95% white to 95% black. Ain't that some stuff? This was contributed largely by black code. Now you see, Black Codes was a law that came about from 1865 till 1866. These laws had the intent and the effect to restrict African Americans' freedom, as well as force them into a labor economy that was based on low wages and debt. You see, it was a way for Southern whites to restrict the voting of blacks. These laws included, but were not restricted to, bearing arms, illegal. Gathering for worship, go to jail. Voting was illegal. Not having a job, which was kind of weird because you could only have a job as long as it was recognized by white people. But still, you going to jail. Teaching a black person how to read, you going to jail. Learning how to read, also illegal. Not having an address, despite not being able to own land, go to jail. Even the simple crime of stealing a loaf of bread had a minimum sentence of five to 10 years in prison. All these crimes that were actually pretty petty turned out to usher in the era of the convict leasing system. And with the fizzling out of black codes, in came pig law.
dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought. As if modern day slavery wasn't enough, slavery transformed itself in a new way in 1877 through pig law. Now, we stepped out on the campus to get a few opinions on how fellow students felt about such things. Um, I think that that's pretty messed up and unfair that they could just put someone in jail for no reason and not explain why and it not be like something against laws and regulations or the Constitution. I feel like even though they were back, back then, of course, I feel like today um, African Americans are easily penalized for stuff that might not be as big as, like they have overly large like penalizations for small things, you know. I think that pig laws were unfair and unjust treatment of the blacks. Basically it was still slavery because they were working, yeah, but they weren't getting as much money as they deserved to get for what they were working for. And I pretty much think that the white people thought that they were doing right by giving them some sort of money, but 25 to 75 cents an hour still isn't enough to make a living off. So I still think that it was some form of slavery. Um, I feel like it's unfair. I understand that, you know, they're in prison for a reason, but um, they're still human, and if they're putting in a lot of work, they need to see the benefits of their labor. The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war on the left and black people. A Richmond told journalist Dan Baum in 1994, and I quote, you understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily we could disrupt those communities. Not to put a limitation on the prisoner lease system, Nixon coined the term war on drugs. And then Reagan used it in 1981, and then Clinton used it in 1990. Through the war on drugs, the wheels of the prison system were fastly growing and growing and growing, leaving the black community devastated and the white community thriving. Inmates were working up to eight hours a day with pay from 23 cents to $1.15 an hour, leaving inmates no choice but to leave jail with more debt than what they came in with. Which means your jobs are not being taken by illegal immigrants, but rather by the legalization of the use of unpaid prisoner labor, AKA the convict leasing system. Some well-known companies that support this system are Whole Foods, McDonald's, Victoria's Secret, AT&T. Walmart purchases its produce from prison farms where laborers are often subject to long drawn out hours in the blazing heat without sunscreen, water or food, and even BP, which when BP spilled 4.2 million barrels of oil into the Gulf Coast, the company sent a workforce of almost exclusively African-American inmates to clean up the toxic spill while community members many of whom were out of work fishermen, struggled to make ends meet. From dentures, to pill bottles, to shower curtains. Almost everything you can imagine is being made in the American prison system. After calculating where your brother, your cousin, your uncle, or even you might end up by the third grade, there is little left to wonder why so many of our young black men are in, the prison, are in prison doing the same thing our ancestors did years ago. And what's even more insane is the willingness in which we see ourselves. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King Jr.
We are not fighting for integration, nor are we fighting for separation. We are fighting for recognition as human beings. In fact, we are actually fighting for rights that are even greater than civil rights, and that is human rights. Malcolm X. Those who do not learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. George Centignana. Men simply copied the realities of their hearts when they built prisons. They simply extended into objective reality what was already a subjective reality. Only jailers really believe in jails. Richard Rice. I have come to believe over and over again that what is most important to me must be spoken, made verbal and shared, even at the risk of having it bruised or misunderstood. Audrey Lord. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Barack Obama.